All right, this problem is a Likert medium, the partition equals subset sum. And it says, given an empty, a non-empty array of positive integers, determine if the array can be divided into two subsets so that the sum of both subsets is equal. And these examples will make things plain. So we have this array. Can we divide it into two such that the both halves are equal? And the answer is yes. So we can do 1, 3, 3, and then 7. That plus 1 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 7. Same here. Oh, actually, no. In this case, we cannot. Uh, there's no way to divide it into two that they both add up to each other. And uh, this one, 1, 2, 3, 5, and 11 work out. And in this case, 1 and 20 and 6, 7, and 8, as you can see here. Now, in this video, I'm going to go through uh, two solutions. Now, it's a dynamic programming problem. So typically, you have two kinds of solutions. You have one where you use recursion and one that's iterative. So here, I'm going to go through the recursive solutions, both the naive and the memoized slash optimized solution. And what does it involve? Well, first of all, you have to check if the sum of the array, you have to check the sum of the array because the only way you can divide it into two, right? Have two things that are equal to each other is if the sum is even, not if it's odd. If it's odd, then there can be no two subsets with equal sums. So we return false. And uh, so what does that look like in code? Um, now for the recursive solution, you want to visualize things like a tree. And the, you, if you've been following along with the videos, this, this pattern shows up often, okay? So we have uh, this function, kind of addition array. We're passing an array of numbers, right? So we get the total sum of the array, and we check if it's even or odd. So if it's not even, right, we know we can't divide it into two, even two equal parts, like that are whole numbers. So we return false, we're done, right? This just doesn't work. And then for otherwise, what are we going to do? We just need half, half of the half of what the total sum is. And we just need to check if there's any combination, right, of the array that equals that half, right? That half of the array, that half of the total sum of every element in the array. So what are we going to do? We're going to pass in this call function, this depth first, depth first search function that is a standard, a staple pretty much of dynamic programming problems. And it looks like this. Its implementation looks like what we see up here. In fact, I'm going to move this down because we don't need that right now. And uh, let's focus on this implementation here. So we're passing the array, the entire array. We're passing the, uh, this is our indexer. Think of it as a cursor. So it's going to start at the end of the array, representing the last number in the array. And then the current subset sum, which we remember down here, we um, set to half the total sum, right? Just to start. And because you don't need to check the whole, whole thing, you just need half, right? Because we're breaking it into two. So what are we going to do? Our base case. Uh, for every recursive problem, you have a base case. Uh, and what is the base case? If we, if we can get subset sum down to zero, so that's what we're going to be modifying, one of the things we're going to be modifying, then return true. It means it hits zero on the spot. It means there is something that adds up to half of the total sum. So return zero. Otherwise, if we are at, if this didn't happen, but we somehow have checked every single thing, our cursor is now at the end of the list and or our subset sum shot past zero then return false and how is it going to shoot past zero at, at every instance we are going to call dfs again in two cases one where we consider the the current number we evaluated or did we include this number then we we add that in there the second case where we don't include the number and just skip move the cursor by one right move the cursor by one don't include the number then this case up here is move the cursor by one but inc increase the number and that's all now this is a naive approach, and there are going to be a lot. Of, there's going to be a lot of repetition. I'm not sure if it's worth even stepping through with a debugger, but but let's talk about the uh, the time complexity of this approach. So it, we're essentially evaluating a tree where uh, each child is made up of whether we included that particular number in it or whether we didn't. So each child has as much as at most. Each child has as much at most two nodes. And that translates to O of 2 of n, 2 to the power n, uh, for the time complexity. And for the space complexity, the maximum depth is going to be n. Anyway, like that is the like full length, assuming we wound up being a linguist of nodes. Um, so that's for the naive approach. But comparing this to this, this is the, um, the memoized naive approach. So let's look at the, this first function, right? This first function here, whether we can partition the array or not. So the difference in this case is, I mean, we're still doing the same checks, checking if it's even or odd, right? Returning false if it's odd. 
and using half of the total sum as well. However, we create this memoized table that stores every combination of the cursor, whatever, cur whatever uh, index we're considering, and uh, whatever sum that leads to for the subarray. And what does that look like? The DFS function is also modified a bit, right? And let me just go back and forth between these. So uh, we can look at that right there, the, the difference between these two functions, right? It's just the memo, this extra argument to DFS. And then when we go to, up to DFS, this is the non-memoized version, right? We can see that here we have a mem memo that, that is basically stores like uh, records what it is we've seen before, right? In this cal calculation, in this call to DFS. And we're still doing the same thing, right? Checking, oh, did we add this number in what we're considering or did we not, right? And then either way, we move the cursor. And, but in e each case, we add this extra memo, memo function. And then when we store the result, whatever we get after the recursive calls are done and they return, we add it to the memoized results because every now and then, if we come back, we want to see if we've seen something before to reduce the number of calls and operations we have, and we return the memo. Super, it's a lot, it's a lot going on, but this video has gone on for quite a while. Feel free to step through this with a debugger. Maybe I should right now. This video is still under 10 minutes, but yeah, this is it. And in, of course, in this case, uh, the time complexity is different, right? Uh, we have a O of M, M times N, right? Where, uh, what is M, what is N? All right, O of M times N, where M is the subset sum. That's the first subset sum where we divided it by two, right? And N is the length of the array, the original array. So that's what we get for the optimized version, both for time and for space. For space, because we have uh, the space required for the memo, right, in the worst case. And that's all for this problem. Now you can leave at this point, right? The video is complete, but I, I felt like for those who uh, maybe mind have issues setting this up. I just showed you the debugged version of the problem. And then what does that look like? So we have this DFS function. And uh, for the first case, we're calling can kind of partition with this array, the, this number array. So down here, you can see three, one, one, two, two, one. And if you check, they sum up to 10, right? The, they sum up to 10. And so the subset sum winds up being five. And now because 10 is an even number, right? We, we don't return false here. Right, it's just uh, just like I, I said during the explanation. Instead, we come down here, we create this memo, memo of various combinations of cursors and uh, subset sums. And then in the first instance of the call, we check, oh, have we seen this before? And obviously we haven't, right? And as uh, we haven't we haven't seen this before, this combination of the cursor and the subset sum. The cursor is at five. The subset sum that we're evaluating is at five. And what does five look like? Five looks like zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? The thing indexed here, the last thing, that's what we're considering, the one that over here. We haven't seen that before. The subset sum is still five. Um, no, we are not at the, at the beginning of the list, right? We've not reached here. That's what n, n, n equals zero checks. And the subset sum has not overshot. It hasn't gotten below zero. So no need to return false there. Instead, call it again. But this time, call it with what, right? If you look at the call stack, over here, DFS is called DFS one more time. And prior, it was five, and the subset sum was five. But now, pay attention to n and the subset sum. Right? n is now four, why? Because five minus one gave us four, and the subset sum is now three, right? From, from five. And why is that? Because because we were at this array, but evaluating this one, whether to take it in, which was the first branch, or to leave it behind, which is the second branch. And we're, in, and we're evaluating the first branch, which is to take it in, to consider it. So n becomes four, and uh, the subset sum, it becomes three. And again, we haven't seen anything before, so this doesn't break, go, go in there, this doesn't go in there. Same for the same reasons as last time. Only that now n becomes three, right? So. If, what what was it before? N was four. Now it's moved to the third one, which is this, and the subset sum uh, moved from three to one because three minus two is one. So now we're evaluating this one, and you just keep going in there. And now the subset sum 
is zero because prior it was one, right? You look at the progression, right? On the call stack. So it started off as five, five minus one is four, four minus, actually it started off at five when it was at one, then five minus two, right? Gave us three, then three minus two again, gave us one, then one minus one gave us zero. So we know that there is a combination of things that work. And then this is gonna return true, which is gonna get memoized over here. Right? Cause it's a sign that we've seen it before and so on and so forth. That's the end of this video. It's gone on long enough, but I hope you have the intuition for it just by watching me step through this. Cheers.